About six months ago, I read an article that emphasized the importance of a perfectly flat surface for sharpening blades. Ironically, they use a leather strap for honing, which isn't hard or flat. That got me thinking, what if I used glass, a truly hard flat surface with a compound? I tried the green stuff at first, but it didn't sit well on the glass. So I switched to Tormic paste. I was blown away by how sharp I could make my chisels, sharper than I'd ever achieved with leather. But being cheap, the cost of the Tormic paste didn't sit well with me. After months of experimenting and testing different grits, I finally found a homemade compound that works just as well, but for a fraction of the cost. That discovery led me to ditch my stones for sandpaper, and now I can confidently say I've never had sharper single bevel blades. Today I'm going to show you my compound and the two sandpaper system that thanks to friability will give you the same incredible results. <sighs> To make the paste, there are a few things that you're gonna need. First, you'll need some kind of mason jar. This is a half a pint. I've also got a measuring device here, which is a measuring cup. And you'll need some mineral oil, but it needs to be really, really thin. The abrasive powder that we'll use is aluminum oxide, and this is 8,000 grit. I bought a bunch of different packages to get the kind that I like. I've got some of this stuff over here that I don't like, and I think this is silicon carbide but you really need to make sure that it's aluminum oxide. This product comes from a website for rock tumbling, but for this entire package, I think I paid maybe $20 altogether. This will go a very, very long way. In order to be able to put this on something, I've got these little plungers. Really simple. I'm going to start off by adding my powder. And the formula is just a one-to-one. -one. I'm gonna fill this up six tablespoons. At six tablespoons, I can dump this into my jar. And now I'll add six tablespoons of my mineral oil. Now we can mix the two together. I'm just gonna use a dowel to mix this up. It needs to be mixed really well. We want this to be a fine mixture. I mean, we're not making pancakes here. No lumps. We don't want any lumps. Go ahead and add my lid and just shake it. Now I will mention that you don't wanna add this to any kind of leather. Uh, mineral oil and leather, from what I've read, does not do well together. But this is not intended at all for leather anyway, it's intended for glass. Now, with it all mixed up, it's gonna have this kind of a pasty look to it. In time, it will settle, but you can just go and kind of move this down if you want. But that's pretty much the entire process right there. And this will give you some really sharp chisels. Very sharp. When it's time to use it, you add your plunger, make sure it's below the surface and just slowly pull some in. And really that's good right there. I'm pretty happy with this consistency. If you wanna make yours a little bit thinner, you can. Now we'll go on to using it. Ideally the best surface to put this on is gonna be some kind of ceramic. Ceramic won't scratch because aluminum oxide is slightly less hard than ceramic. So technically you should not be able to scratch the surface. If you use glass, you will scratch the surface. But I don't think long-term that those scratches are gonna be a problem. I could be wrong, I haven't done this for a long time, but I haven't noticed anything with, in the time that I've done it in the last six months. Buying ceramic tiles, and you can get these for like 20 cents, would be perfect, except that they are not always completely flat. They have, some of them have kind of a dip in it, so you have to be really careful about that. Glass is really a lot better, I think. I've had much flatter surfaces on it, which is why I, I think I would recommend this over the other. You only need to add a little tiny bit, and that's the secret to this. We're not using a whole lot. We're using a very tiny bit each time. I've got my chisel here, and I wanna push it down and pull back. Push down and pull back. And just keep that process going. And as we use it, you can see that it turns black. That means that it's working. Stay away from the edges. A lot of these are beveled. So you'll end up running into that bevel. But as you can see, it's getting black, which means that we are sharpening this. This other polished stuff that claimed to have been aluminum oxide did not have the same result. It kind of turned into a mess but I'm doing this a little bit, it doesn't take a lot. You can see that it's starting to get black. 
Besides doing the bevel parts, you also want to do the bottom. And now I can just keep doing this and this is going to get that little bit of a burr on the back side. This must be absolutely flat against the glass though. Once I'm done, I can use a rag to wipe it off. And that just gives me such an incredible sharp blade. And this is a really crappy Harbor Freight chisel, so it won't last very long at the edge. But I wanted to show that even something as bad as this can get sharp. Not everybody likes the hair method, but I'll tell you before I started using this method, I never could get my hair to pop off like this. And it's just so ridiculously sharp. That's my method for making a compound that will really pick your chisels unbelievably sharp. To make the sandpaper cutter part, I've got a piece of hardboard. I've got a couple strips of wood. These are just some scraps. And I think that this is a one by 10. All the dimensions will be on the website. Instead of lining my pieces up like this and then attaching them, I did go ahead and make some that are mitered completely optional. You can, of course, attach this in any way that you want. You can use brad nails. I'm gonna go with just using hot glue. It's really not that big of a deal. I'll make sure it's flush on one side. Now that that's attached, we'll add glue to the other piece. I'll add some marks along my edge here. That way I know where to cut each of my pieces. I've got my first piece, which is an inch and a quarter. All this is, is my greatest chisel width, which is an inch, adding a quarter of an inch. My second piece is gonna be my lapping block, and this is two inches altogether. And finally, for my spoke shave and my planing blades, I'm gonna move out to two and a half inches. So those are my three marks right there that I'm really concerned about. And it's really easy to just go ahead and extend these marks across here. This is pretty much the entire jig for cutting sandpaper. The one problem that comes with this in time, and I did notice this as I cut it, is that your blade will start falling into a groove. If the groove is off a little bit, it's really annoying and you'll make the wrong marks. So I suggest using some kind of cutting board like this to make your cuts. The two different sandpapers that I'll be using is 220 and 600 grit. And I really think that this is pretty much all that you need to get your blades where they need to be. Most of the time I will be using just 600 grit, but there are times where if you have a chip in your blade or there's something wrong with it, that you will wanna go up to 220. But really these are the only two grits you need to worry about in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and take my first batch, which is, this is five sheets all together, and I'm gonna cut it in half. My hardboard is exactly half of the width of my nine inch mark, which is four and a half inches. You'll want the sandpaper down so that you're not damaging your blade too much, which you are going to do in time, but that will help reduce that. That's really all there is to it. I'll leave a video at the end that walks you through my full sandpaper sharpening method. I've also got a Before We Make Things episode on the main channel, which dives deeper into the process and includes an interesting historical account that you might enjoy. Both will be linked at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to thank my patrons in the comments for helping to keep all of this free. And remember to keep making things.